All right, today I'm going to go over your geometry unit 7 test review, all about circles. Uh, so the first section, um, we talked a lot about vocabulary. So the center of the circle is going to be P. The radius goes from the center to the edge. So really, I have three options. We have PB, PC, or PD. Any of those uh, would work. So you just need one for that. Uh, the chord, technically we have three. We've got BC, BD, and CD. Any of those will work for the chord. And last, uh, a diameter. So the diameter, there's only one drawn here, and that's going to be BD. For question five here, if segment CP, if this is 28, what is the measurement of BD? Well, it's just going to be double 28, so that would be 56 feet. Okay, uh, next we're dealing with circumference. So there's two formulas for circumference. Either circumference is pi times the diameter, or the circumference is 2 pi times the radius. Uh, so in 6, we are given the radius is 11.1, .1, so the circumference is going to be 2 pi times 11.1, .1, which gives us 69.7 meters. Here, we're given the circumference. So 314 equals, we want the diameter, so I'm going to set that equal to pi d. Algebraically, to get d by itself, I'm going to divide by pi, which gives me 100 centimeters. Okay, and then 8 and 10, we have this circle inside this square. If the side of the square is 8 inches, so if this is 8 inches, then this is 8 inches. Okay, so the circumference is just going to be pi times 8, because 8 is really just the diameter. Okay, and then if the circumference of the circle is 37.7, find the area of the square. Okay, so I'll set 37.7 equal to pi d. So the diameter is going to be 37.7 divided by pi, which gives us 12. That's the side. If the side of the square is 12, then to find the area, I'm going to multiply 12 times 12, which gives me 144 meters squared for the area of that square. Okay, next we have section 7-2, measuring angles and arcs. Uh, so what we're going to do in this section is we're going to identify whether the arcs are a major arc, minor arc, or a semicircle, and then find their measure. So a major arc is bigger than 180, a minor arc is less than 180, and a semicircle is equal to 180. The measure is the measure of the central angle. Okay, so if I want BF, if this is 50, this is 50 because of vertical angles. Uh, so it is a minor arc because it's just less than 180, and the measure is 50. DF, okay, if this is 50, then this is going to be 130 if I subtract from 180. So that is a minor arc still because it's less than 180. DCF is going to be this arc here. Okay, so it's going to be 180 plus 50, so that's 230, and it is a major arc. And last, BEC okay, is going to be 180 plus 50, so it is also 230, and it is major. Um, if I had something like BFD, that would be a semicircle. Okay, for question 14, use circle Z to find the length. Length is different than the measure. Length is the actual uh, distance that we want. Uh, so I want QR if SZ is 8. 
So the, the formula for arc length is the central angle over 360 times 2 pi r. So for this one, the central angle for QR is 60. Divide that by 360, multiplied by 2 pi times 8. So that's going to give me 8.4 inches. In the next section, we talked about chords and the arcs associated with them. If the two arcs are the same, the two segments are the same. So to find x, I'm just going to set 3x minus 4 equal to 20, which means 3x equals 24. Divide by 3 to get an x value of 8. All right. In our picture, us is 10, rs is 24, and qt is 37.5. And we want to find these measures. So RT, if this is 37.5, this is 37.5. And that's just a property if this is perpendicular. So this is going to be 75 when I add those two together. For ST, if this is 24, this is 24. And then for X, if this is a right angle, we can use our Pythagorean theorem to find X. Okay, so when you do this, you're going to find that x is 26. Next, we have inscribed angles. Inscribed angles are going to equal half of the arc that they intersect. So if this is 22.5, this is going to be double that, or 45. Okay, so this angle is half, the arc is double. Here, to find angle Q, I need to find this arc, so I'm going to take 60 and 190 is 250. I'm going to take 250 and subtract that from 360. That gives me 1, 110. So this is 1, 110. The angle is going to be half of that, or 55. In this diagram, we are trying to find the measure of angle X and the measure of angle Y. Well, for X, if you look at it, it intercepts this arc right here. And up here, this angle Z also intercepts that arc. So if this is 45, this must also be 45. For the other two, W intercepts this arc, and Y intersects that same arc. So those two angles are equal, so I can set those equations equal to each other. So I'm going to set 7x minus 14 equal to 4x plus 7 and then work through this algebra. So subtract 4x from both sides. Okay, add 14 gives me 21. And then divide by 3. That gives me what... Oh, this is supposed to be for this problem. Uh, that gives me what x is equal to. Then I want to plug it back in to get the measure of the angle. So angle y is going to be 4 times 7 plus 7, which is 35. Okay, so don't forget to plug it back in to get the, the angle. For angle A, we're going to find this. It's going to be tempting to say we'll just set these two equal to each other, but they are not equal to each other. What we do know is this has to be a 90 degree angle because it's half of its intercepted arc, if the intercepted arc is, if this is a diameter, this is 180, which makes that 90. So what I can do, I know the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So I can say x plus 10.5 plus 10x plus 13.5 plus 90 equals 
180. Okay, or you can do the two acute angles equal to 90 if that makes more sense. Uh, so I'm going to combine my like terms. So x and 10x is 11x. And then 10.5 plus 13.5 plus 90 is 114. I'll subtract the 114 to get 66. So x is 11. But again, that's not what I want. I want angle A. So I need to plug that back in. So 11 plus 10.5 is 22, 21, sorry, 0. 0.5. Sorry, this over here is 6. Bad math. Uh, so the measure of angle A is 6 plus 10.5, which is 16.5. Sorry for any confusion on that. Okay, now we're going to talk about tangent lines. Uh, so one property of tangent lines is if you have two tangent lines from the same point, they must equal each other. So we'll set 4x plus 13 equal to 7x minus 29. Subtract 4x. Add 29 over, so this is going to be 42 equals 3x, and then divide by 3. Uh, another property is tangent lines are perpendicular to the radius at that point. Uh, so that allows us to use the Pythagorean theorem. x is going to be our hypotenuse. So this is going to be 4 plus 9 is 14. 13. Uh, so x is going to be the square root of 13, which is 3.6. For this next one, we're going to use that same property that if they're coming from the same point, they're equal. So those two are equal, those two are equal, and those two are equal. Well, if this is 2, this is 2. If this whole thing is 7, that makes that 5, which makes that 5. And I'll go ahead and fill in that 3. Uh, so x is 5. The perimeter, I'm going to add 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 5, gives me a perimeter of 20. Okay, in this next section, we have secant lines and tangent lines. Uh, and they either meet on the inside we have the intersection, on the edge, we have an intersection, or the intersection is on the outside. We handle all three of these different. If the intersection is on the inside, then the measure of this angle is the average of these two. So x is going to equal 1 half of 124 plus 72. If I add those up and divide by 2, we get 98. Okay, so that's if they meet on the inside. If they meet on the edge, this is going to be like an inscribed angle where it's on the edge. Uh, so this angle is going to be half of the arc it intercepts. Uh, so I need to find this one. Uh, so 360 minus 156 is 204, which means angle 3 is half of 204, which is 102. Okay, if it meets on the outside, this angle is going to be one half the outside arc minus the inside arc. So R is going to equal one half of 90 minus 40, which is one half of 50. Half of 50 is 25. For this one, it's the same idea, except for what I'm trying to find is one of the arcs. So I'm going to set up the equation where the angle 17 equals 1 half of outside minus inside. So 65 minus x. Okay, um, algebraically, we could distribute or just multiply both sides by 2. Which on this side just gets rid of the 1 half. 
Uh, so then if I subtract the 65, we get negative 31, which means x is 31, because we don't want negative angles. And in the last section, we talked about equations of circles. Uh, so the general equation is x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared equals r, where x1 and y1 are r squared, are the center, and r is the radius. So from the equation, we can get the center. So it's always going to be opposite of whatever it looks like here. So the center here is going to be positive 5, negative 2, if this is a plus. And then if my r squared is 49, that means my radius is 7. Writing the equation, uh, if the diameter is 6, my radius is going to be 3. And I'm just going to have x plus 8 squared plus x minus 2 squared equals 3 squared, which is 9. Uh, then we can graph. So graphing, the center here is going to be 0, 0. The radius is going to be 8. So from the center, I'm going to go 8 on all of these axes. And then do our best to draw a circle. And this one, our center is going to be at positive 4, negative 3, and the radius is going to be 5. So I'm going to go over 4, down 3, and then go in each direction, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 5. And then again, do our best to complete the circle. So that is your unit seven review. Good luck on your test.